good morning. As you're coming in, finding your seats, ushers, if we can be ready to be able to help find some seats and be able to point them out. There's a few up towards the front here. But let's grab our songbooks. As you're coming in, turn over to page number 50. Page number 50, there is power in the blood. Let's all stand together. The blood of Christ cleanseth us from all sin. Page number 50, let's sing it out now all together. finding some seats i got four more right down front here if they're needed and uh, looks like a few in the back there and uh, we are thankful we got some chairs in the foyer if we need to be putting out some chairs and uh, i need some men to brother tom you've got it taken care of back there and uh, we are ready thank you so much for being here at granite state baptist church this morning how are you good to see you and uh that was to someone specific by the way and uh anyway but uh so thankful to be able to be in church how many this might be the first day you've seen the sunshine all week long and uh we are glad to be here listen this is a special day starting off a few days for us of our spring revival meeting and uh, we are thankful for that we have pastor barry parson who is going to be preaching for us and uh, so if you came specifically today just because you had to hear pastor chamberlain preach i'm going to ask you to come back next sunday and uh, make sure you're back here and uh, we are looking forward to this just special time for our church that i need to be preached to also and uh, asking the Lord to be able to stir in our hearts. And uh, so we had a great Sunday school hour and looking forward. But if there is anything we can do, visitors, if it's first time with us, make sure to be able, we'll get you a Get Acquainted card. We want a record of your visit while you're here, and we're so thankful for it. Let's open in a word of prayer, and then we'll sing another song together. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the privilege to be able to gather together in church this morning. And Lord, how our hearts are stirred. And uh, Lord, we're asking and begging you to be able to save souls, even this morning. And uh, Lord, to stir the hearts of the Christians. 
Lord, that we may be closer to you, living for you. And uh, Lord, we do ask that you would continue to watch over, Lord, the nation of Israel and uh, the Middle East. Lord, I do pray for the Lord Jesus Christ to be able to make himself real and uh, that souls would be saved. Now, Lord, would you be with this service here this morning? And uh, Lord, I pray that you would take care of whatever spiritual need it may be in someone's heart and life. Lord, we know that you are capable and willing to be able to meet that need if we'll allow you to. And so, Lord, we thank you for it. Have your will and way. In Jesus' name, amen. Remain standing. Turn over to page number 70. Page number 70. We're heading to a land of an unclouded day. And uh, page number 70. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Hymn number 70. Let's sing all four verses now. Sing it out now. singing you may be seated we are looking forward thought that song would be appropriate after this week and all the rain and spring and uh, uh, looking towards all that God has for us and uh, let me share just a few announcements and uh, we are looking forward to a wonderful week. Uh, I went downstairs. We have overflow downstairs uh, for the service and and uh, haven't quite heard them singing down there yet. And so I told him, I said, we'll feel the, the floor vibrating from the singing downstairs. And uh, we are so thankful to be able to be in church this morning. And so continue to pray throughout this upcoming week. Now, we've got uh, 10 o'clock service today. And then Brother Barry Parsons will be preaching again at the 12 o'clock hour. It'll be a different message. Don't say, well, I heard that one. I don't need to come back. And uh, be a, I think it's going to be a different message, right? And uh, unless we just don't get it this morning. 
So I'm saying get it, and then he can move on to another message. And uh, But 12 o'clock this afternoon, tomorrow night, 6.30, and uh, Pastor Tim Rabin, Pastor Mike Norris, uh, going to be flying in tomorrow, pray for their travels coming in, and uh, we'll have two preachers tomorrow night, and then we'll get started at 9 o'clock on Tuesday morning with some ministry sessions, and uh, you say, I've got to work, that's fine, come back on Tuesday night, 6.30, and uh, we'll have service again, and uh, just asking God to be able to stir our hearts. He he taught this morning in Sunday school about having the right balance in our attitude and our heart towards government, family, and church. And uh, all three institutions that God has established, we see it throughout Scripture. And I said, wouldn't it be a blessing? I was burdened this week. I was praying over, and he had no idea. I said, if God would, would make sure our attitude and our spirit was right towards and I said, God, would you help us to get excited about our church? I'm not just saying ex excited about church, but about our church. That uh, it's not just, hey, I can go to church anywhere, but it's, hey, listen, uh, a job would oversee it. I mean, would, would trump it. That's not a play on anything. But uh, that it would be, listen, I just want my church. And uh, asking the Lord, there is no place I'd rather be. And uh, I don't want to go play a basketball game instead of church. I don't want to go play a softball game instead of church. And I'd say I don't want to work instead of going to church, but this is my job. i got to be here. And uh, But when you do what you love, you never work another day in your life. And uh, I'm thankful to be in church. So listen, let's be here Monday night, Tuesday. I know God has something for us. And then, of course, Friday, Simple Steps Recovery. Saturday, be a bridal shower for Miss Kelly. Where's, she might be downstairs. You're, you're right here. Is that still on? Okay, and uh, just making sure, and uh, April the 27th, we have it for the men's prayer breakfast, May 11th, our walk for life that we participate in, mark those dates down, I'm just going to ask on a couple things, one, someone dropped off about two boxes worth of different lessons and curriculum and just dropped it in the foyer out here, if that was you, can you let us know what that's all for and everything? Instead of piling it in the foyer, just let Brother Peter and I know so that it goes to the right place. If that was dropped off, let us let us know about that. And then just some housekeeping for our church going into uh, this week. We have several uh, pastors and their families and everybody that's coming in uh, for tomorrow night and Tuesday. And so we are looking forward to being a blessing uh, to these pastors and their families as they come in. Maybe we can be a, uh, a blessing. They'll be refreshed and encouraged. And uh, thank you to everyone that has sponsored a hotel room uh, to be able to help take care of a pastor and the family while they're in town. And uh, I think we're right about, I think we could still use about eight or nine more hotel rooms. And uh, if God would lead you to help with that throughout the day. And uh, let's be found faithful in our tithes and our offerings. You say, how how do we do that around here? Close of the service, there's just an offering plate up back and a box that's sitting back there, and uh, God takes call, care of all of it uh, from there. And uh, so we're thankful for all that God's doing. Let's be faithful this week, okay? And uh, come in. Maybe God will put that one pastor on your heart that you could meet from across New England that you might be able to be an encouragement to. Okay, and uh, let our church be able to be a blessing to them. And so at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Mike to be able to come on up, give us our scripture reading uh, for this morning, and uh, we'll be over in Psalm 19 for our scripture reading, and as Brother Mike's coming uh, for that. Aren't you glad to have them back in? They're out he was out preaching for a couple weeks, and then he understands what it is, Brother Parsons. They were down being grandparents for a couple weeks and uh, enjoying that, but I'm so glad you're back in town for it. Good morning, everyone. We had been out for uh, four weeks, and you haven't changed a bit. I see some old faces, and I see some new faces, just the way it should be in a growing uh, Bible-preaching church, right? We're in Psalm 19, and uh, Pastor uh, Barry Parsons, uh, uh, during Sunday school, talked about the end times and things like that. If you've ever watched a newscast and said, what is going on, or what am I to do, where am I to go in times like these? Well, uh, we have the truth. The newscast is 
whatever it is, but here's the truth. Uh, the Word of God is an old book, but fresh in uh, the truth that it gives us. And that's true in our psalm this morning. In fact, uh, the very first verse is something that we experienced just a little while ago with the eclipse. We were down in Virginia, and they got nothing uh, like what we got up here. Uh, it got a little darker, a little cooler, but uh, we didn't have any Facebook posts of your great pictures. Christy and I were able to enjoy the ones you folks posted. Nate, you had some great ones. I think, Amy, you had uh, some great ones. People were so excited on the first day of work when I returned, two people came up and said, do you want to see my pictures of my eclipse? It was like they were grandparents, you know? <laughs> oh, he looks beautiful. He looks just like you, you know. They were excited. Our psalm today, the psalmist uh, reflects on how God uses his creation as a witness to his own glory. And then the word of God, and then is so true throughout the scriptures, reflecting on God, he turns to himself, the psalmist does, and reflects on his sinfulness. Let's remember that as we hear the word of God this morning that God intends the word to be a mirror that reflects where we are spiritually and to help us to see us as God sees us. So let's begin reading Psalm 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Mike. Let's all stand together one last time. We'll turn over to hymn number 57. 57 at Calvary. We'll sing all four verses. 57. Years I spent in vanity.
For the message here this morning, Miss Kelly Nagley is going to come sing a special for us. cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there's some that have said, well, my, my sin is too bad. There's a cross for that. Well, my, my marriage is too far gone. There's a cross for that. My kids are too far out in the world. There's a cross for that. 
Our country's too far gone. There's a cross for that. And uh, you say, well, it's the one I, I see hanging all over the place. No, just specifically, when we talk about the cross, we're talking about the sacrifice that the Lord Jesus Christ made for each and every one of us. Aren't you thankful for that? And, uh, man, you're preaching, but I, I could preach. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Brother Parsons, come on up here. Pastor of Landmark Baptist Church down in Haines City, Florida. We have another, I'll call him a special guest because we're in Sunday morning service, but my brother Danny is sitting right over here. Danny, can you wave your hand? And uh, he's that older brother. How many here had an older brother? We didn't get into too many fights because, honestly, he just laughed at me. I mean, it, it would literally bring him joy that just to laugh at me trying to try to do anything. And uh, But I'm thankful he works with Pastor Parsons um, down in Haines City, Florida at the Landmark Baptist Church. And uh, we're so thankful for it. But Brother Parsons, thank you for coming up and uh, his good wife back here. And uh, thankful for it. Preach for us this morning. Amen. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. I think I got the mic on. Amen. All right. Take your Bibles, if you would, and go to 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter number 5. I'm preaching out of this book in honor of your pastor. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It is so good to be up here with you folks. Amen. And uh, I, um, I already got a couple stories. I, without a doubt, I'll hear a couple more before the day's out about what you, what you were whooped with. Amen. And, uh, and I just got somebody was watching online on the way in and heard and then stopped me and let me know uh, that uh, some different things that they... They had broken on them and, uh, and then what they used. And so, Brother Danny, why don't you come up here and pray for me and pray for the message this morning. I do appreciate Brother Danny Chamberlain. He works uh, on our staff. He uh, helps us in the Bible college, and uh, he is one of our good men. We could not do the, what we do without him. Lord, I'd ask that you be with us this morning, meet with us as only you can do. Just be with my preachers. He brings forth a message from your word that you'd empower him with the message that you have for us today, just work your will in your way, that uh, we'd uh, take it and apply it to our lives, that we may leave here better servants and witnesses for you. Work your will in your way in our hearts and lives, and pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my brother. First Peter chapter number 5, if you'll look there in the very first verse, I want to preach a message this morning on He careth for you. He careth for you. And the Bible says there in the very first verse, The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away." Now this week you're going to have a lot of men that come in and many of you have invested in the work of God in the Northeast by doing taking a room. Many of you, even your preacher got up and said today about he's looking forward to other preachers coming in and they'll preach to preachers, but they're also preaching to you. And so I pray that you would pray for them. You know, we have an epidemic in our country of not having enough men to stand in the pulpit and preach the Word of God. And we desperately need to re help revive and encourage the men of God we do have and be thankful for them because, folks, I, I can stand before you this morning. I, I was born and raised in the state of Maryland. My pastor pastored for 30 years and then stepped out of the way, and they, they are today without a pastor. I'm watching my church shrink because they have no one to lead them. They have no one to replace them. Now, they're praying and they're looking and they got men, but I'm going to be honest with you. And someone who is an example to the flock and sample, the Bible says, Amen. It's just somebody who's a Christian that God has elevated and called from among us and thrust into leadership to lead us through the Word of God. And so we ought to be praying. And I appreciate this meeting, and I'm thankful to be a part of it here in the Northeast because it does invest in so many folks. I'm looking forward to what God's going to do this week. But he, he uses the contrast here, and He is speaking specifically to elders or leaders, all right, but I want you to see he's going to use two situations here. He's going to speak to two different groups of people, elderly or elders. And again, it's not necessarily your age. 
But he's speaking to folks because, again, to be an elder or to be a pastor, you don't have to be old. Okay? You just don't have to be green according to the Scripture. So the Bible gives elder and younger so all of us can put ourselves in these areas spiritually. You may be gray-haired today, but you may have only been saved or know the Bible in just a few years. You may be gray-haired and be not only older in this life, amen, but older in the faith and been around a while. And so just like the preacher is, is in, admonished to be an example to the believer, listen, you've got plenty of years under your belt to encourage others. To help, and again, sometimes, you know what we like to do? Is go tell other people how to do it. But an example is someone who just keeps doing what they're supposed to do. Just living what they're supposed to live. And their life is the example, or their life is the words that other people see. You know, it encourages me. I'll just say this before I move on and get to my points today. We just had a, a dear lady, and, and I mean, she just... She is one of my greatest encouragers. She just, she's lived in our village for over 20 years. Since I've been pastor, she really hasn't been able to attend our church. She's 97 years old. She just, her, her son actually had a massive heart attack and died, who was her major caregiver, and her sister had to come get her and move her to Georgia. Now that broke my heart. Guess what? It broke her heart. And, I, and she said, you know, she said, but you're still, this is still my church. You're still my pastor. And I told her, I said, every once in a while, I'll, I'll wear, I, I, wore, I wear this yellow jacket for Easter. It's the only time I ever wear it. It's bright. It looks like a banana. Okay. So bright. And I wear it on Easter Sunday morning. And I get a smile every year when I wear it. All right. But I said, every so often, I said, I'm going to put that yellow jacket on at odd times, not just for Easter. And I said, I want you to know while you're watching online, I'm doing that for you. And I'm going to wave at you. And I'm going to say... You know who I'm waving at. Amen. Because she loves me and I love her. And because there's separation and distance between us, it doesn't mean that I'm going to ever quit being an example to her or an encourager. And I'm going to realize that from a distance that she's going to encourage me, that she's been faithful, that she's staying with it and she's sticking to it. For us, we don't realize how much that we depend on each other for encouragement. And you know, there's some folks that are doing it that, that are going to get in the pulpit this Sunday morning in the Northeast and they don't have a packed out auditorium. It's just the way it is. To be honest with you, sometimes in, in churches and folks, you know, they have, I've heard a preacher say it's like the tide. It goes in and out. <laughs> Amen. And I'm just telling you for all of us, he says, what are we looking for? All of us are looking for a day that the chief shepherds returns. Even the under shepherds are just trying to shepherd like the, the Lord Jesus would if he was right here and he was the one that was shepherding you. And we are. He's shepherding the church as the head. The under shepherd's just trying to do what he tells them to do. Preach the message he's telling them to preach, to speak the way he wants to and to show up and be what God wants him to be. But the Bible goes on. It says, likewise, ye younger, in verse number five, submit yourselves unto the younger, the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in, that time, in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. I, I want to preach a message this morning on he careth for you. You know, sometimes if we're not careful, we get out of bounds and we think that maybe we've had a bad experience with a pastor or we've had a bad experience somewhere along the line. And if we're not careful as God's people, we'll think that God is in heaven with a great big hammer or a bat and he just can't wait to knock you over the head when you do wrong and he just wants to pound you down. That God's the big man upstairs. I hate that term. He's my heavenly father. Do you know my dad was good and I already preached on how he was a good dad and corrected me. But I can tell you my dad also loved me. My dad also when he beat me he'd say, he'd say son, I don't want to have to do this. He'd say I don't, he said I, I'm doing this because I love you. And as a child, with a child's mentality I would think I wish I could love you back. You know, but when I, I got older and I became a dad, I realized how hard it was. 
to do what I was supposed to do. To love my child and correct them. To educate them in a way that this is wrong. To tell them no. You know we have an epidemic in our country of parents that don't tell their kids no. And I'm thankful I have a heavenly father that says, you know, right from the start of man, he started out in the garden telling man everything. Think about this. This is who God is for you. He said, all this, everything in the garden you can have, but this one thing you got to stay away from. You think about it as a child. I never, I never thought about all the things my parents said. You can go outside and run. You can go do this. You can go do that. But this one thing you better not mess with. And you know what exactly I wanted to do? The one thing I wasn't supposed to do. And if I wasn't careful, I would focus on how I couldn't have the thing that I wanted to have. Do you know what cares are? This is the 1828 dictionary definition of care. Concern. This I like this one. Number two was anxiety. Then it was this. Uneasying of the mind occasionally by the fear of evil. Do you know if we're not careful... We'll have cares about how the Heavenly Father really cares for us. We'll think that I better not mess up because God will thump me over the head with a big stick. God's just waiting to come down on me. Folks, you serve a God that's so big, so much bigger than that. It's already been mentioned that there's a cross for that. Can I just tell you that all the things that happened in my life and will happen in my life that I needed to pay for because I was a sinner. Don't, don't get excited. You're a sinner too. Amen. But the things we've done wrong, that Jesus, God the Father, loved me enough to ask His only begotten Son to come from heaven and to pay for all the things that I needed to be thumped for and to pay for that so that he could redeem me back into himself, buy me back, to have me close. Think about this. All the things that I had anxiety and concerns about, he came and paid for it all to buy me back into myself. You know, there's so many things that we worry about. Sometimes it ain't worth worrying about. There are cares that we carry, and the biggest one is about eternal life, and sometimes we don't care as much about that as we do the things that are just going to be on this earth and day-to-day things. We're worried about living forever. Can I just share with you? No one in here is going to live forever in this body. Spiritually speaking, you could live forever. And you know what? I'm so thankful that as a 15-year-old boy, I took that to heart. I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, and I began to live eternally from that day on. Spiritually speaking, I grew up in the faith. I became an elder in the church, and not a Mormon elder, by the way. I call them moron. Anyway, more Mormon elders, okay? But an elder... You know, I was young and I've been taught and I've grown up. But the Bible says here, he talks about some things. What do I do to grow up? Do you know what I did to grow up? I submitted to the authority. He said, preacher, you're right in the the middle. You know, before I could ever become an elder, do you know I've spent most of my ministry either being a deacon, a good man in the church, or an assistant pastor to my elder. And then one day, when God saw fit and my elder stepped away, I became the elder. You say, preacher, what do you mean? I'm just saying, that's God's plan. Do you know what I've constantly done and I had to learn how to do? Submit. There were things that preacher, Pastor Carter asked me to do. And I thought, that ain't a good idea. You say, what would you say to him? Nothing. (laughs) I did it. You know, I mean, I remember even being in work I, before I became a pastor. I was a deacon and I worked with my father-in-law, and my, my two brother-in-laws, and we were equal partners in a business working, but somebody had to be a head. Anything with, with more than one head is a monster. So my father-in-law was the eldest. He had been plumbing the longest, and so he made decisions. Sometimes he'd sit down and we'd talk through it as equal partners, and we, none of us agreed on anything. 
we didn't agree on what piece of equipment we were going to buy, what we were going to do. And he said, this is what we're going to do. After hearing it all, and you know what the rest of us did? We submitted. Now, he wasn't going to be the one in the equipment every day. But he was overseeing really all of us and overseeing everything. And he made a decision. And guess what? The rest of us submitted and we worked forward with it. Do you know the number one thing that takes to really grow up in the Christian life and also in the real world is to submit. See, most preachers that you hear preach on submission is the wife to the husband. Do you know the same scripture says that you're supposed to submit one to another? You know, in a marriage that everybody, there, there are areas that God has given the wife that she ought to do. All right? And it ain't just washing dishes. There's just things that she's better at in my home than I am. And I submit to those things. And I, I again, her opinion, her guidance, the kids. There would be, my kids would still be crying at 18 if she didn't calm them down when they were young. I couldn't make them stop. Hand them to mom, boom. Hey, I'm just telling you, there's some things that we ought to submit to in the Scripture. How about this? The preacher already mentioned this today, and I, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to try to really climb this, but one of the things about a local New Testament church, all right, is being, I, I, again, for me, is ownership. I joined God's church. But the preacher here, listen, Pastor Chamberlain is the under shepherd that God has set over this place, but this is the Lord's church. Amen. Okay? Now, guess what you get when you join the Lord's church at Granite State Baptist Church, you get to say, that's my pastor. Okay, when you come in, you can say Pastor Chamberlain. Instead of saying just Pastor Chamberlain, when you join a good local church, all of a sudden now you don't just have a generality of I attend church. It is my church. And then I, he's my pastor. This is my people that I come to church with. See, sometimes if we're not careful, we have a, a worldly mentality. That is God's plan to submit to his authority and to join his local New Testament church. And sometimes we don't like his plan. Because that will mess up my plan of being a member, member of some church I don't attend 25 years ago that I used to attend. And I'm, gonna, you know, I'm a long-term member of that. I, I have trouble with this in Florida. Folks move from the north and they come there and they're like, I don't want to move my membership. from." I said, well... Are you attending there? No, I used to. You know, we have a bad case of used to's. Just because I used to don't mean I am doing that today. Or that it's true of me today. We ought to submit to God's plan and His purpose. And His purpose is, I'm supposed to be a member of where I serve. I'm supposed to be behind the man of God right where I'm supposed to be. And I submit to the elder. It's hard to... When you get tough times and there's some tough decisions to make to submit to my pastor if he ain't my pastor. Can you imagine if Pastor Carter had hired me on staff and let me be a member somewhere else? That don't fly. That's craziness. There are people in this day and age that think they can come work for a church and then they can go be a member anywhere. That ain't the way it works. I ought to be a member of God's New Testament church right where I attend and I serve. You say, preacher, how do you become that? Listen, you know, it's so easy. It is so easy. You get baptized. Now, do you know how many folks, I mentioned it in the early service, there are so many people that have been baptized so many different ways. But again, after they submit to knowing they ought to be baptized, then they have to be submissive to being baptized. Now, I didn't teach on this in Sunday school, but I do feel led to talk to you all about this. You know, baptism is more than just being dunked. Because if it, if we were, if it was just being dunked, we'd be dunkards <laughs> instead of Baptists. You know, Baptist, how we got the Baptist name? We used to be called Anabaptists, and Anna means re or rebaptizers, because people would be baptized as Catholics. They'd be baptized in Methodists. They'd be baptized by Presbyterians. But we believe, according to the Scripture, that baptism is not just about the mode, being deep water, picturing the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. But we also believe that baptism 
is in being baptized into a body of doctrine and under the right authority. And so if I was baptized under wrong doctrine, it was just a bath. Now, many of you may have a jacuzzi at your house or a swimming pool. They're much more popular in Florida because it's warmer. But I mean, just because you went under the water doesn't mean you're baptized. Just because it rained and you ran through the parking lot doesn't mean you're baptized. Down here, there be, could be an argument. Snow is water. So if you laid everyone down <laughs> under and covered them up with snow, you know what I'm saying? Hey, anyway, still not a great picture, right? But I'm just saying, you know, the right mode and right under the right authority. Do you know that the Lord Jesus Christ says that he passed on? Listen, he had John the Baptist and John the Baptist had authority from God Almighty. I mean, he, he had, God said, start this thing, right? And he started baptizing. We, and again, we know that they dunked people before that, but there was this birth of the New Testament church that happened. And Jesus came and was baptized of John to show he had authority. Now, for all of us, you say, where's the right authority? It's under the church. Do you know that if somebody, you know, I know people in my hometown in Maryland, there's this guy that sits out by the road with a tank of water. And just baptizes people. <laughs> and he does it in the right mode. Right? And I mean, I really believe if you talk to him, he, he really was pretty close on doctrine. But he, he wasn't a pastor. He wasn't, didn't have a church. So again, if you don't have, uh, authority is all about what are you being baptized into? You're supposed to be baptized into the Lord's church. So you got to have all three, and you say, well, preacher, how am I supposed to know if I have all those things? Well, you, again, were you in the right place of authority? Were you baptized, and was there a church? You know, there was a man that came just the other day, and I was talking to him after the service, and he said, preacher, tell me if I ought to be baptized again. He's non-denominational. That was a box. I could check it off. Yes. I was baptized by a woman. Yes. All right? Talk to him about doctrine. Do wrong doctrine. Yes, you need. He, but he was baptized in the right mode. He was underwater. I said, you, that's the only one you had right, and you, you're, you need to be baptized again. And this guy, like that, submitted. He said, let's do it now. I said, we don't do it without the church present because you're being baptized into the body of the church. Now, we could have done it because I had authority from the church to do it. I could have done it. We could have got it done right then. I said, but why don't you come back tonight? when the church, the group that you're being baptized into, will be back here tonight. And you know, he came back with his wife, walked the aisle after the service, submitted himself for baptism, and did. You know, when we talk about baptism as the first step of obedience, you know this Bible is a book of obedience. God gives us instruction, and we're just supposed to continue. As God tells us, you know why sometimes some of you may be here, and you've got cares and worries, and you say, it was so easy, I got saved, and I stepped out, and I felt so close to the Lord. But today, I don't know why I feel so distant, and I, I don't feel that closeness that I did when I first got saved. Have you been baptized into the local church? God's not going to tell you another step of obedience after you know what the next step is. You need to submit to the next step of God's plan before he's going to reveal the next step. Sometimes we want 10 steps so we can decide if we're going to play hopscotch. And we'll skip the ones we don't like. Yeah. You know, that's how, I mean, that's where we want. We want, it, we want to be like Burger King. I want to take the things off the burger I don't like. God's Burger King ain't like that. To, to go for the crown and to... To, to really see God do something in your life, you got to be obedient one step after the other. Submit to the elder. Look at, look at the scripture with me. He says, and I think this is important. He says, likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. So who am I supposed to talk to, preacher, about getting baptized? The elder, your pastor. He says, all right. And he says, yay. <laughs> I like that. Yay. I got a grandson that can't say a whole lot, but he can say that. Yay! And now he knows Papa. That's what, that's what he calls me, Papa. Papa. I'm like, what do you want? He can't say nothing past that. Amen? So I'm assuming he's Papa. So I take him. And we run around and enjoy ourselves. But yay! Do you know how I felt when I got baptized? I got saved at 15, grew up in the church at 5. 
and I, I, I had been, listen, I, I'm not kidding you, I prayed and was at the altar at age five, but when I was 15, I realized that I didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I thought everybody in the place was going to think me a hypocrite. I walked in aisle at a youth meeting at another church in Maryland, got saved, and I came back to my church and I told my preacher, I need to get baptized. I got saved. I really got saved. I need to get baptized. And I thought my preacher was going to get on me, and I thought other people, my parents, I was dating my wife at the time. We, well, we didn't go anywhere. We liked, liked each other. Okay, I don't know what you call that. Back then we called it going together. We didn't go anywhere, but we went together. Amen. If we were going to go, we would have gone together. Amen. Amen. Yay. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, so, but I mean, I, I was there and I, I remember that just the going before my, my pastor and saying preacher and my preacher was excited. My wife had a lot of the same experience in her life. And I remember our pastor met her at the altar and she said, I need to get baptized. I got saved this week. And he said, I'm so glad, Miss Sherry. I don't know what heaven would have been like without you. Folks, I'm just telling you, sometimes we think not only that God has a big stick, but we think the preacher's got a big stick. And you know, his heart is for you to do what God's leading you to do. For you to step out in obedience and some, so if you would just submit yourselves. Look at what he says. He says, yea, all of you to be subject one to another. That means coming into the church, we ought to consider what everybody else's needs are. You know, we were coming in today from the hotel, and I thank you for, I mean, it was a beautiful place that you kept us last night, but we saw a van. And it wasn't just caring for one another, but caring for others. There's a van with a trailer out, and there's clothes out in the parking lot. And my wife says, look, I was driving, so I wasn't looking all off the side of the road. She's like, you know, she does. And then she was trying to distract me. <laughs> look over there. There's a Granite State van. And she was like, oh, what, what are they doing? They got racks of clothes out there. And I said, I think, it's, I think they, they give away clothes to folks. And we got here and we asked the preacher and he told us all about it. You know, that's just caring for one another. If you know when a church really cares for one another, they'll have so much care, it'll extend past just their church family. It'll reach out to people outside of there. It'll reach out with care of clothes. It'll reach out past clothes. It'll reach out to care to give them the gospel. So that you just won't warm them up with clothes. But, you know, there's a lot of church that do clothing and feeding people, but... Folks, that won't change people's destiny. Wouldn't it be a blessing if when you get a, and again, I'm sure, I know where I'm at. I'm just going to tell you, they, they don't get a coat without getting the gospel. I'm just telling you, I, I, re, I believe we ought to understand that we ought to be subject. You know what a subject means? That means I'm un, that I submitted to the authority and I'm under the direction, subject to one another. Even like this, I, I don't know about if you pick it up this way, but this is one of the things that I love about the church. The, the Bible is perfect, and I can follow it. When, I'm, when I submit myself and I'm a member of the church, I'm a subject of God's realm. Just saved and in, now I'm a true. Listen, I have membership. I'm subject one to another. That is, listen, this is what the Bible is going to tell you. Do, have you ever been uh, driving and... We drove all up through the Northeast, okay? And you guys have some crazy drivers up here. All right, now, we sit in a lot of traffic where we're at. But here, everybody, that instead of doing 55 or 65, everybody was doing 80 or 90 on all those roads that they were supposed to be doing that. And so there was a lot of, you know, and, uh, you know, everybody dodging in and out of each other and all that. But, you know, I mean, there's rules of the road for a reason. This, this Bible has rules for reasons. And subject to one to another is simply, you know, that you, when you get an accident or you get charged for a fault, you didn't really break a law. You failed to yield the right of way to someone else. Do you know oftentimes when you do something wrong to your church member, it wasn't that you didn't have the right to do that. It was that you failed to yield to someone else. You know, as a church member, you can. I can do this. I have the right. Yes, you have the rights in Jesus Christ to do that. But most of the time, you know, like when we get to the door and nobody wants to go in. Oh, after you. No, after you. After you. After you. We're all trying to yield right away. And we think about that and we're fine. But listen, what if we had that kindness throughout everything we did in the church? 
Now, I won't go first. You go first. And it would be good if we did say, to a certain extent, let me honor you as my elder in the faith after you. Younger, elder, subject one to another. And he goes through the scripture here and said, but really the word means libel and we're yielding, yielding that. Look at what he says next. He says, one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. I wrote down, submit to the elder. Submit one to another. And then I put down this, shielded through humi humility. Do you know God resisteth proud people? I deserve. You ought to see what I put in the plate. It's in the back. All you got to do is open a box. Right? I, and I'm just going to tell you, we live in a day and age, if we're not careful... We think we're something because we did what God told us to do. Do you know that tithing, the 10% that God requires of us, if we do that, we've just done what God asked us to do. Sometimes we think that we've done something when we've been obedient to God. You know? Have you ever heard that song, There's a tither down the well, come help me? I can't afford to let this tither be. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, and I mean, they, you know, help. There's a tither down the well. Sometimes if we're not careful, we'll think because we're obedient to God that we have a higher status in the church. When we ought to be subject one to another. But humility. You know that the Bible tells us when we tithe or we give, our right hand shouldn't know what our left hand did. Not just talking about it with other people or feeling we're proud. We ought not act that way. We ought not try to even put it or relegate it within ourselves. And thank God for people that will give 10% and I'll go beyond it and go beyond it. Do you know that the Bible talks about tithes and offerings? Hey, you know one of the best ways to have a revival? When you submit not only to God, but God, you submit your pocketbook. God wants all of you. Guess what all of you is? Your bank account too. You said, oh, the preacher, everybody always preaches about money. No. If God's got your heart, guess, what's got, guess, guess what he's got? He's got your wallet too. 10% is something required, but at our church, man, I feel like all the time, I'm not telling you, preacher, I'm, I feel like I'm always raising money for something. And it ain't for me. It ain't going in my bank account. It's got nothing to do. It's just because the work of God is, I mean, I realize what time it is. And it's about right now I'm raising money for the Navajo Indians. My teenagers are going to go all the way out on a missions trip to New Mexico. Do you know why we're doing that? Because I want to go see people saved on the mission field and out in New Mexico. But you know what I want too? I know it will help and grow my teenagers Amen. to go soul winning and to see people who are destitute of the natural things that they live on on a daily basis. Now, we're not talking about just air condition. We're talking about people with mud huts and no power in America. And for our children to go out and see that, you know what they start thinking? 10% is not all that much to ask of me. For God just to take care. And listen, by the way, when you're a member of the church... It don't hurt that bad when you start thinking, this is my church. And when God told me to give, God told me to give to his church to bring it into the storehouse. And that the lights are on. And the air works. Hey Amen. And I mean, things are taken care of because God had a plan before I ever come along. And long after I'll be gone, if Jesus don't come, he'll still have a plan. And I'll be submitting to that plan and I'll be subject and then I'll be shielded through humility. You know, one of the things in this life, if we're not careful, we get proud. Every time in the scripture, Nebuchadnezzar, world leader, took over thing, got a little pride. Get a little pride. Got a little proud. Got a little lifted up. And God let his fingernails grow out. Look like claws. This guy who could orchestrate not only the greatest battles that have ever been fought, but a guy who could build a city and have a plan and, I mean, have a mind like Nebuchadnezzar to rule the world. God humbled him to a place where he ate grass like an animal. Listen, God, God's not above humbling us. 
I decided a long time ago, you know, I don't pray for humility because God will give it to you. I just decided to be humble, to be subject, to be submissive to God and to shield myself. Look at what the scripture says. God cares so much about me. He sent his son to die on Calvary for me and to shield me. He says, humble yourselves in verse 6, therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. That means I just want to stay under God's hand. You know how you stay under God's hand? Under his book. This book is a book of protection. When I accepted his son, guess who's at his right hand? The Lord Jesus Christ. I put myself in humility and said, Lord, there's no good about me. The only good in me is Jesus Christ. You know, if we're not careful, we like to tell everybody how good we are. Be careful. If you get your nose too high, when it rains, you'll drown. I'm telling you. Humility is not something we pray for. It's something we say, thank God that I'm a sinner. And like Paul said, I, if I had to gauge everybody, I'd just rank myself as chief because I don't know your life. I don't know what you've done, but I know who, what I've done. And I know that Jesus went to the Calvary and it, it, just if he had to pay for my sins, he paid for our mess. And so I will humble myself under the mighty hand of God, knowing who I am, not lifting myself up in pride, but humbly asking God to God and to protect me, to shield me from myself. I want you to see this. He says, casting all your care upon him. I told you cares are concerns, anxiety, uneasiness of mind, occasionally by fear of evil. You know, we ought not worry about what God's looking to do to us. We ought to be humbled under the mighty hand of God in protection and then cast our cares on him. If I'm, if I'm high, if I, if I, you know, I mean, under his wings is a wonderful song and a beautiful mindset for all of us to realize that God, I'm sheltered in the mighty hand of God. And then to understand that if there's any other care that I feel underneath of God's hand, can I, can I just be honest with you? I, I believe that this is one of, the, one of the most underrated scriptures in all the Bible. For the pastor, for me, for the person in the pew, for the pastor, every one of my cares. You don't think your pastor has cares? He carries your cares too. All the ones you share with him, he's praying about. Worried about your family, worried about the outcome, worried about all those things. You know what the Bible tells me? I, you know why a pastor ought not get out, I mean, just lose it, burn out, because he ought not be carrying the load he's carrying. On a daily basis, all the things that people give me, there are people say, I don't know how you do what you do. I'll tell you how I do what I do. I'll tell you how your pastor does what he does. On a daily basis, I have to remember to go, go to the landfill of God and dump off all my cares. Everything that loaded my truck during the day, the things the devil's brought up about my past, the thing the devil brought up about my present, the present every day, all the meetings I had and all the things that I worried about that people said were coming or have come or they've done, about my children. I got children just like you do, getting married, God help. Amen. You know how people make fun? You know, it could be the greatest thing or it could be a funeral. I mean, I'm just telling you, that's, there are people that kid about it, right? But I mean, you know what I want for my children? I want them to have a marriage like I've got. I want them to have a marriage that they love each other, they pull together, that they submit one to another, that they are subject to the, to the God of heaven and the things of the word, and then they live in such a way that they humble themselves under the mighty hand of God. You know, when I worry about... My wife and I were just talking the other day. We can't see how it's all going to work out. They're getting married, you know. How's all those things going to work out? <laughs> I dump those cares on the Lord. They're doing right. You know, there's a bunch of people shacking up in this age. 
because it makes better sense just in case it don't work out. That's not God's plan. That's not God's way. You know, you know why they do that? Because that's the natural man's way. God's way is to make sure, pray, and then humble yourselves and trust God to keep you together. If we trusted ourselves to work it out, we'd all be in trouble. Humbling ourselves. Cares of the past, cares of the present. How about this? You know, driving down here, I, was, I knew anybody who knew the Bible was, has, has cares about the future. If you even heard a little bit of news or read a scrap of paper, Iran's hitting Israel. You know, and I, I'm thinking, you know, man, everybody's going to be, is this it? Are we out of here? Hey, for some of the dear saints that have been waiting and saying, come quickly, Lord Jesus, you're going, yeah, <laughs> yay. Jesus is coming back. Look at it. They're attacking Israel on every side. We've got to be out of here. I believe it's a precursor. I believe the beginning of sorrows is just around the corner. Some of you that are thinking about getting married, I, you know, I remember that. When I was about to get married, I'd say, everybody else saying, come quickly, Lord Jesus. And I'm like, hold off just a week. I just want to get married. Then I'd say, hold off, Lord, until I have the first baby. Then I had teenagers, and I started saying, come quickly, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Amen. But do you know God cares about our future? So many times, especially for the youngest of us, the reason we won't trust God the way we ought to is because we're worried about tomorrow. And you cannot predict it. You can't, you can't say exactly what's going to happen. So why wouldn't you give all those cares? See, we're okay. We give all our past. Lord, I want you to save me from my sins of the past. Lord, I want you to help me right here in the present. But the future, I'd like to keep and plan for myself. But when you cast all your cares upon him, that means, Lord, you can have my past because I'm not real proud of it. Lord, you can have my present. And I'm thankful for the day that the Lord convinced me that the worries that I had of the future, couldn't, I couldn't carry them on my own. And I cast them on him. You say, preacher, how come you're not out of the ministry? You're not where you know that there'll be guys that come in here that are pastoring that will have forgotten this scripture. And just like you, just like me, I need to be reminded that I can cast all my cares upon him. Brother Danny, he's got getting one married, got one leaving Bible college and going off to work on staff somewhere. You don't think he's probably got cares and worries for them? Whether, how, how people are going to treat them when they get there. Whether they're going to be taken care of. Every one of us have cares. Cast your cares upon him. I'll be telling you this. The day my life changed was when I, I really, as a person in church, I realized that I had just been in church. And that I didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that because of my sin, those sins were going to take me to a devil's hell. And I remember what peace and joy it was that day to cast my cares upon Jesus Christ. And I'm going to be honest with you. God has been faithful throughout my life. Even in my present when it was overwhelming and it was too much for me. I had a child that was, I thought was going to die. I mean, I, I mean, we were in the hospital. We call him the bubble boy still. He's 6'2", six, 6'3", six, now, scrapping boy. I wouldn't want to mess with him. But I remember what he was like inside there, and they had oxygen on, and they said if he decides to continue to breathing through the night, it'll really be up to him. If he wants to, it's up to him. And I thought to myself, oh, no, it ain't up to him. It's up to somebody else. And I went and I found a place. I, my wife was, had her hand stuck through there with that little rubber glove and was holding the finger of my child, three months old. And I went and found a place just to get away from everything. And I begged God and said, God, I have all these cares. My son's life is in the balance. And I cast my cares and God was faithful. 
you know, if he took my son, he would have been faithful to carry my cares. Listen, in the future, I wish I could share with you all the things, but that my church right now, on the precipice of growing and thinking, and listen, I, I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you how good God is. I mean, Sunday we had 900 in service on Easter Sunday. And it's crazy to be thinking that I might have to build a building. You guys got to build a building. But I'm thinking, God, what are you doing? Build a building? In this age, so close to you coming, people are going to think I'm crazy. And I just went to God and I said, God, your will be done. I cast my cares upon you. Because if I'm not careful, I'll carry all my cares, my worries. Salvation was the first one. Listen, if you're here and you don't know you're saved, you don't know where you're going to spend eternity, I pray today that you'd cast that care upon Jesus Christ. He came and died for you. His death, burial, and resurrection paid the payment of your sin. And that care, that worry about going to a devil's hell, you can cast that care upon Jesus Christ and he'll take care of it. For those of you that are saved today, your present is overwhelming and you don't know how, what's going to work out in the spring, the fall. You're worried about what president's going to get in. Why don't you cast those cares upon the Lord? Surrender your... Don't get, don't get so high and mighty that God has to humble you. Get to the place where you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and say, God, I trust you with everything. God, I trust you with all of it. And then, all, I mean, how about if the church, Granite State Baptist Church, said, God, instead of just not, instead of maybe not sure what God has, I mean, with this, you've got overflow downstairs, just trust God with it. God, our future is in your hands. We're going to follow your man that you've given us. And we're going to just, I mean, we're going to give. We're going to, plan, we're going to make plans to be what you want to be. We're going to be surrendered and give our cares to you. Do you know, I mean, I live in a day and age where people have cares. They have burdens. They have worries. You know, I mean, I, I know, I, you know, our church just recently paid everything off before the pastor retired. Do you know how hard it is for a pastor that's a young man? You know, I mean, I've been, I'm not that young, but I mean, when your pastor that retires is 86, you know, I'm pretty young. Amen. But to say, I believe we ought to put this down on what we're going to do, and then we ought to borrow money to do what God told us to do. That ain't easy. But I know I can pass my cares upon him. I can trust him with it. I, I, I can lead the church and say, please trust him with it. Hey, today, I don't know what carries, uh, cares you're carrying today, but you can cast them on the Lord. You leave here, you know, leave here not carrying the same burdens you came in with. You know what an altar is about? Being altered. Not leaving the same way you came, but casting things upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you imagine the Old Testament saint when they came and they brought a lamb down to the front, handed it off to the priest, and they would take and put their hands on his head and they would begin to think about all their cares and the things that had happened through the year, things that they wanted to transfer and let that lamb represent. It was a time of really awareness for them. And then that lamb would go and be slain. You see, the Lord Jesus was that for us. And he doesn't stop being that after we get saved. On a daily basis, at the end of each day, I try to keep short accounts with God. And I come to him and I put my hands and I reach out and I try to, just like that Old Testament soul, cast my cares upon the Lord Jesus Christ. I beg you to do that today. If you need salvation, maybe you need hey, your present your worries, your care, your bills, your problems, your whatever it is, health, whatever it is, give it to God today. Don't carry those cares out of here. Give them to the Lord Jesus Christ. How about your future? The future of Granite State Baptist Church, the future of your family, the future of this, this whole conference, the future of New England. Why don't you give that to God and then follow Him in everything He tells you to do? Cast your cares upon him.
with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, dear Lord, I, I pray that you use the message to help, to heal. I pray that people would be submissive to your will and do what you ask them to do. I pray now that, Lord, if there's one that is here that's lost and doesn't know Lord Jesus as Savior, that they would cast their cares upon him today in salvation. Preacher. Let's stand with your heads bowed and eyes closed, if you would, this morning as Miss Amy begins to play. What is it that's the burden or the care upon your heart that maybe you just need to find your place here at the altar and give it to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm casting it upon you. You say, oh, I can, I can cast it right here where I'm at. Well, then do it. How many would say, Pastor, there's something on my heart this morning Lord knows what it is, but right now I need to cast it upon him. Pastor, would you pray for me? Would you just slip your hand up, slip it down? Pastor, pray for me. There's things we need to cast on the Lord. Then, then do it right now. Give it to the Lord. Lord, here it is. Lord, I've been carrying this. And Lord, I'm giving it to you. Maybe you're here today and you would say, Pastor, when he was talking about the Lord Jesus and how he died on the cross and paid for my sin and Pastor, I'm, I'm not sure that I'm a child of God. I'm not sure because I've, I've never been saved. Not sure I'm on my way to heaven. But Pastor, I'm concerned about it enough to let you pray for me. I wonder if there'd be one here and right now with no one else looking around. You'd say, Pastor, I'm concerned about my eternity. Would you pray for me? Would you just slip your hand up, slip it down. Pastor, pray for me. I appreciate your honesty. Would Pastor, pray for me. Just not sure that I'm saved. Listen, neighbor, there may be one right beside you that you may say, I don't think they're saved. I... Maybe God would speak to your heart and you'd lean over to him and say, are you, are you sure that you're saved? Are you sure that you're a child of God? Care for a soul today. There's some this week that have texted through. And if I were to put up here on the screen the list of cares that people have made mention of, or aren't you thankful that we've got a God that says, I'll take it all. Take them all. Cast in all your care upon him. So what is it that you're holding on to? Our Father, we sure do love you. Lord, thank you for the scriptures. Thank you for that simple truth. Cast in all your care. Lord, I'm so thankful that you care for us. Lord, your burden for us, you'll carry it if we'll give it to you. And so, Lord, I pray that you'd help us. Lord, may we be found faithful, as the preacher said, to cast all that burden on the Lord. And Lord, we thank you for all of it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Choir's going to meet for just a few moments, be done by 11.45 in preparation for tomorrow night, Monday night service. We're going to have a time of fellowship. Um, I've been asked, so let me go ahead and give you this care if you can, being subject one to another. She's asked me to, so I'm going to. And uh, little girl Izzy, Ashley's daughter, has an upcoming surgery. I'm reading this so that I don't mispronounce any of this that was sent through thyroglossal duct cyst removal and tonsils and adenoids removed and in certain ear tubes all four of these will be done on one surgery either april the 30th or may the 1st so you say i don't know how to spell all that pray for izzy on the end of the month god knows exactly where she's at that the touch of god will be upon the surgeons and be able to take care of that and can i say this pray for mama and grandma and grandpa too Okay, some of y'all know how that is. You say, well, we're praying for the child. What about the mama with the hand through there holding on to the little hand? Pray for the mama and I pray for the grandparents too, okay? And so, listen, we're going to sing just a chorus just to give me time to get towards the back. And uh, there's, there's a lot of first-time visitors here that maybe I don't know your name Church family, would you look around, fellowship, make sure someone has a connection point before they leave here today.
and uh, extend the right hand of fellowship to them. We're going to sing just a chorus over on, on uh, number 360. A great one after that message. We didn't know what he was preaching, but uh, are you downhearted? No, 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 okay? Troubles may come and troubles may go. We trust in Jesus. And so we're going to sing this chorus together, 360. And uh, let's sing this chorus. Watch the end of it, okay, because there is a pause at the end of it before we finish. Brother Peter's going to lead us, and so watch us on that. We'll be right back in here at 12 o'clock. Stay around for the afternoon service. You never know what God has for you for this afternoon service, so let's be ready, okay? Let's sing it together now. Are we down missed.